This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy, and I'm doing a video on FTDNA and the Big Y 700, but it's also particularly on the block tree and what my project sees with the additional YSTRs that were added and what we do with the YSTRs. A lot of people ask a lot of questions on this, so this is particularly related to my project. We have 70 uh, men that have Big Y tested, and we have 122 that have actually done Y testing uh, in a particular area, in our lineage one, uh, that have tested Y12 all the way up to big Y. But we have 70 current testers that have completed and successfully completed the big Y700. This is what we do uh, with the YSTRs at the big Y. We have found a value for us, but this is project level. Individuals won't necessarily see this gain or at least won't see what we see with them. But what we have been able to find is patterns of YSTRs. Yes, there's variants. They can always change over time. But what we have found that there's certain patterns for certain groups of men, what we see in the block tree and then what we've done on our own file as admins this is the standard block tree, and I've added the one just outside of our L196, but they are still classified in our lineage one. And so that's them over here, this block number one. Block one through 10, that's important because what I'm about to show you, and I'm gonna show you several different things and what our conclusions are on what we see at this point. But this is what you're gonna see inside the file I'm getting ready to show. So I wanna make sure you knew that this is the family trees version of the block tree and including the ones just outside of our L196, which is our defining SNP for all the men, all 70 men that have big Y tested. So what we've done is we've taken and expanded that block tree into our own file. And we've also added the discover more dates at this point into the file how they fall on each snip and so we can analyze that to see what the value is there this video isn't covering how the discover more the discover works or how those numbers of those most recent common ancestor numbers work this is covering what we see in the ystrs and what we do with them now i have uh, blocked out the names of the individuals in our test kits for their privacy however i want to focus on what i showed you earlier I showed you the block number one down through block 10. Well, here's block one through nine. There's not anybody at the 10, which is the FT31442. There's not anybody tested to that level yet. So what you're looking at here is the data from FTDNA and what we see. Right off the bat, when we're looking to upgrade someone in a test kit, we look for particular YSTRs that could help us upgrade them and also look for patterns that represent groups of men that uh, when we're looking at their terminal SNPs. If you notice right here, we have a group of men that have this terminal SNP. Well, just underneath of that, as I said earlier, this is nine, this is eight. The 262646 is underneath of the 227919. This is the parent, this is the child, and it goes upstream that way as we go across. So that's this group. Notice every one of them have the DYS391 as a 12 instead of an 11. Now, one other point I want to note here, we have a zero block. These are referenced. This is outside of our large 34 block that is upstream, but these are referenced. They're actually in our project. They're in another area of our project. And as a reference to see what they look like prior to or upstream of the uh, values of the markers. So as we go forward, I'm going to focus on the group that I brought up in that table. And we go across here, and then you notice, yeah, it looks random, 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 random. Well, one thing I want to point out is this one here as well. When you look at this group of men, FTA47557 is my father and I's uh, terminal SNP. We have a 20 in DYS448. Every McCain, all four of these are in the McCains. All four of us that have tested in this area, all four of us have a 20 at DYS448. That's significant. That is an actual value that attributes to our family line. So we found that. Again, it's more of interest 
than a value unless we have a tester that tests and we don't know who they are it's a NPE event but they match us we can say hey this is most likely a McCain uh, line here and that's what's a value of having that YSTR knowledge we go across here and just as a note if you notice the upstream we have most of our men and the CDY. Some people talk about CDY being of significance. It's a very highly variable STR. A lot of people say, hey, don't count it for anything. We look at it. We just say that it's a value to look at, not necessarily consider of importance unless it's way out of line. As you know, 35-37 is what the predecessor prior to the L196 is. And this is all these men. We got 70 men here counting these two that have tested in, the, in lineage one. And 35-7, 35-36. So for our project, the CDY, as long as they're within this range, if we see something uh, that is like a 37 and 41 or something, that's way out of line for our project. And we're gonna go across, and I wanna point out another one right here would be ignored by a lot of people. Everyone that is in our Lineage 1 project has a 1517 in DYS395S1. Those that are not inside the Lineage 1 have other numbers, 1516 or other numbers. That is considered a marker that is definitive for our project, the Barton project. Uh, so everyone has it that so far that is tested has a 15-17 here. It has not changed. So we no did notice that the DYS557 had a value of interest, but we don't count it as one of our primaries because there are a few individuals that have mutations that are outside of the 16. So we don't really say this one's important, but at first it had a pattern that said, hey, there's, there's an importance here. But at, now we're saying that that one can still flip more commonly and we don't count that as an important or significant YSTR. So the next one of value, and we do consider this a very important one, DYS444 is considered a defining SNP for the FT31442 and the FT365675. Based on what we can tell on the data that we have so far, those individuals that test that match our men in the project that have a 12 here will not be an A1708 and below, which is another mutation under L196. So if we see someone at test and they have this number, we're interested in knowing, having them upgrade. And we could, as a project, assist them upgrade. Uh, there's a different levels of upgrades that we do that we have a sponsor that if it's going to gain us information in our project, we help sponsor big Y's and once they test into the lineage one part of the project. So this is considered a significant number. Now here's one that has a lot of debate for people. DYS uh, 710. It, there's questions out there saying, is it a valuable one? Is it important to see it where it's a 34 or a 32 or whatever the number is? We have it highlighted and marked, but what we're finding that it, it can vary because it is more volatile than it appears uh, at first to be. And we don't count that one as a significant marker. Same thing here as DYS5333. Now we're still looking at the Y111s and my father and I have a unique mutation to this point at DYS441. We both have a 14. Everyone else in the project has a 13. That is one that actually applies just to my father and I. We're looking to test another great grandson. My father has a bunch of male children that's in the line. So we're possibly going to test a great, great grandchild and see if they still have this to show that it is a McCain, specifically my father's line. Here's one that's significant for our family. Every McCain that has tested has a 13 in DYS532. If we test another McCain, uh, another person that descends from an 1832 EKA, we're going to expect that that person will have this particular 13. The reason I say that is this person, this person, and the two of us are from three different sons' lines of our EKA. Drives us to say that the, our EKA had a 13 there. That I want to note here that this is the end of what you normally see as a regular tester on a project. 
Now you're going to see going forward is going to be the big Y500 data, and then it's going to be the big Y700. We had some testers that only had big Y500. We upgraded them and gained additional knowledge. So you'll see another line like this one that I'm transitioning from big Y500 to big Y700. A lot of these YSTRs are common, do not mutate quickly, and therefore no value to, to look at them. Now here's here's a big one that we one of the earlier ones we saw DYS 608. Every male that has tested FT 31442 has DYS 608. This is a YSTR common to this branch. You wouldn't see this unless you were big Y tested. This is post value for us to look at and show that here is a definite difference between those that are. FT31442 positive and those are not. And if you just notice to our four reference uh, people, they all have the nine and all the other ones in the other branch of this L196 also have the nine. So this is the mutation and this is a real number. So that is something that shows up FT31442. Everyone that has tested so far has that value, no exceptions. Now another one that uh, we have is DYS542. We believe that the reference value is a 12 and that it was changed to a 13 by those that have the A1708. And as we go across, now we're hitting another one. And I got a red flag on this one because we were discussing this uh, internally in our project. It shows, and we're still working on this one. So this is one of those that we have a big Y test that's going to help us further our testing. We know between here and here was a change from 11 to 12 and it appears to be in the time frame of a name change. So we have, my name is McCain, we have Wetherington or Worthington just above us and then it goes to Barton. Everyone else above us, everyone else in the whole area of Lineage 1 are Bartons. This is the Barton project. Those that test as a Barton have the 11 and those that test with Wetherington uh, have the 12 there in this area. So this is a significant YSTR for our project and a value to our project and only admins can look and analyze this. So that's where as project admins we find value here. We're expecting that when we have another tester come in if they match the uh, YSTR signatures that are of the, even if they're a Barton, and, but they match the YSTRs of the Wetherington, it's going to help us hone in with paper trails of who is the, uh, where the line breaks between the two groups of men. And to further note this, uh, I've been stepping through these and you notice I've skipped a lot of data and get to each one of these. So when we get to the FT117, we notice that again, this group of men, once it's separated, because they become independent variables, whenever those YSTRs changed, it was also during the time frame that they were already FT31442s. It could be the one that changed that affected it, because regardless of, of how you want to look at it, when YSTRs flip, it's likely that there's values of SNPs that could form. You may have variable SNPs or one that actually forms during these transitions of YSTRs. We also see another YSTR, DYS523, that is valuable for those members that are FT31442. Those that have the 12 or even 11 in this case, this is one of our latest testers, it's, it's back mutating in this one. We see a separate value between those that have a FT31442 and those are A1708. Now another significant one for the McCain men is right here. Three sons of the same EKA of 1832 all have a 7 in the DYS583. All the others in the test or in the project in lineage 1 have an 8. We're noting that there are specific locations that are important to the mutations, the SNPs that we have, even though we focus on the terminal SNP. Now you see that I have the starting point of the big Y700 right here at UM. And yes, we have seen some of value. There's a lot more what we'll call uh, no-call areas that have the dash in them, but we still see some value in the big Y700 YSTR is comparing members and seeing if there's a point where we say, hey, 
this is where we want to test more individuals because we're seeing this. This is a break point. Does this actually break where the SNP breaks or is this has happened to be a mutation that does not form a SNP? Now, FTY775, it has some of any tester that actually shows a value that's inside the FT31442 has a 14 and all the others have a 15. Now I'm skipping this one because it has a lot of variation in it. At first we thought it might be interesting, but there's just so much variation in an FTY 927. Same thing with the DYS 612U5. We found that it is just so much variation down the project that it shouldn't be of any real importance. And if you notice, as I'm passing through here, there's some random additional numbers and there's a lot of missing data because they don't do the same quality of reads at the big Y 700. We do count DYS 517U1 as important in value because all those that have that value are in the FT31442 group. Those that do not, including our references, have a higher value. What we say here is this. There are enough YSTRs that we find significant. So we look at every YSTR, we block them together, we look at all the big Y data from the first one in the Y111s all the way up through the 800s of the YSTRs looking for patterns. When we see those patterns, even in big Y testers we already have, we say, hey, here's a point where we see a separation. These men are at this terminal SNP. These men are at this terminal SNP. By having that separation, is there someone that will bridge those two where we can find who that EKA is, or that most recent common ancestor is between those two groups of men. Our project has a lot of testers in this one area, and we find value in those testers in that area. Not everyone will have the same uh, gain. We have 70 big Y testers focal, focused in this one area. We have 16 uh, that are this group. We have the balance of those are in the other group. We keep trying to add more to the other side to try to get it up to 20, 30, as many as we can get. A lot of men do tests for us. The more we can learn with the YSTRs and who to pick to select to upgrade at the Y111 values, we can also say, hey, we need to find someone that's close kin to this person, second cousin, fifth cousin, six cousin, whatever we can find to some of those that have values of interest and try to get them upgraded. Well, I hope by seeing this, you see that some projects, the more you test, the more you can take a look at even YSTRs beyond the big Y700 can help you make decisions as a project, not as individuals, but as a project to try to gain more information and try to get further back in time with paper trails involved. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing right here, watching some of these other videos, and let's continue learning together.